Sing. It's looking good. Hey YouTube, what happened in this? Not only. Azriel, what's going on? We're back. We're back, guys. We are broadcasting live in the hotel. Uh, we're using the mobile service, and we're really pushing it to its limits. We're trying to get it going. It's, it's, I think it might be working, but yeah. We're not really sure. Yeah. I see uh, 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 Jess Sonoma is uh, logging in. It's good to see you guys. We can barely see the comments uh, from down here, so we're going to do our best to engage with you guys. But we wanted to talk today about how you grew your channel to 30,000 subscribers in just one year. Do you guys want to grow to 30,000 subscribers? Give me some likes. Let me know that this is a topic that you're interested in. So Justin, before we get started, tell me a little bit about your channel and what it is that you guys do. So my channel is Primal Video and we help, um, help people create better videos faster. So we really just remove all the barriers to creating videos. Um, all the things like fear of being on camera, um, for tech, what, what to use, you know, the 80 20 of video, how yeah. to create with the least amount of effort or input. Yeah. So that's, that's really what we're about. So. Does that include uh, making lower quality videos? You know, I mean, and I mean that in a, you know, I know for me, uh, when we started to make uh, uh, streamlined videos and develop a process that would go uh, you systematically, the production value dropped. Is that something that you recognize as a truth? Or do you find ways to optimize quality and? I think it's a, it's about it's a bit of both. It's it is about getting the best quality you can with the gear that you've got. Like use your phone. We're we're live on a mobile right now. So yep. I mean it's not we don't need to do a big wire car setup or anything like that. It's about using the gear that you've got and creating the content. Like the hardest part is starting, and most people don't start. So that's what we're all about. And you know, use a plug-in lapel microphone. Use. You know, you don't have to go and have a full studio set up. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. the exciting part about the technology we've got these days. I know that I learn a lot about that from your channel. And even right now, I mean, we're broadcasting on a, an Amazon tripod with uh, a mobile phone I already had and then a, a, a splitter lavalier that I picked up on Amazon. I think it's working well. If we see some hearts or something if it's working or thumbs up. Give, yep. us, uh, give us some thumbs up, guys. Give us some comments if you're yep. seeing it okay. We're seeing sort of like all my emails pop up and my text messages pop up there at the same go. time. We... Every time something pops up, part of me dies. Part of me is like, we're going to lose the stream. Nobody called. We didn't put <laughs> yeah, it on Do Not yeah, Disturb. Seriously. Step number three, Do Not Disturb mode. Yeah. Dude, that's, a, that's actually a great point. i got to remember to do that next time. I'll get somebody calling me being like, hey, your stream's not so good. You know? yeah. And I'm like, yeah, because someone keeps calling me. That's it. So uh, before we go into how you built your channel, tell us a little bit about why we're here. Why are you here in San Diego um, this weekend? We were um, both attending Social Media Marketing World uh, in San Diego. It's an awesome conference for anyone in the social media space or looking to grow their audience and really get the latest tips, tricks, hacks around what's going on in the social media world. So. Yeah. Now, YouTube is not always, I feel like as a YouTuber, we're sort of different than the social media space. What, what can a YouTuber, a video maker, learn from a conference like Social Media Marketing World? Well, at the end of the day, like, social media plays a big part with YouTube growth. Yeah. Uh, or it has for us, at least. And I'm sure you, you'll find exactly sure. the same. Yeah. So it is about the optimization, about the SEO, about keywords, and about all these things, and, and branching out outside of YouTube to really get the exposure from other platforms and not just focus on the one. So it is all about branching out and really hitting as many of these different things as you can. Yeah. Um, but yeah, putting time where time's due. Focus right. on YouTube first and then look at all these other platforms. As right, you for distribution mechanisms, yep. right? To get it out there. You know, back in the day, uh, New York Times would, would make the newspaper, but then they had all these little news shops that would distribute the newspaper. And that's a big thing that I think YouTubers forget about, yep. is we make great content, which we're trying to, but then when it comes to the distribution, it's just kind of like we let it sit on YouTube and hope the keywords yep. will, will activate something for us. But we've really got to be more proactive. Yeah. Now, yep. you and your brother Mike yep. run the Primal Video Channel. Yes. There's right. Two of us. Yep. And uh, you guys have grown from, uh, you know, practically zero to thirty-four thousand in just around twelve months. Now, in my world, those numbers are practically unheard of. We've talked about ten thousand in a year, fifteen thousand in a year, but thirty thousand in a year. Here's the loaded question: How did you do it? So I guess start start at day one. Start day, at day, day one. Day one. Well, I woke up and thought no. Um, <laughs> 
It's like, take, uh, oh, we'll have to correct you a little bit there because I guess okay. that the, we did grow 30,000 in a year, um, but we were, I think it was 2,000 or 4,000 um, before we sort of hit that growth. Got it. So, yeah. so it did take us a long time to get our original 2,000 or 4,000 um, mark. Once we got there, then yes, in a year we grew to, I think we're at 36,000 now. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So what were some of the, the tactics? What were some of the uh, the things that you did to in, to intentionally grow that channel? So I guess one of the biggest things we started to look at was, I guess from day one we've been releasing video tips and all these things on how to create better videos faster. Um, but we started to look at the keywords and the keywords and the tags and everything played a huge part because it's easier if you're creating content that people are searching for. If your content you're creating is helping people and, and answering a question that they might be searching for on Google or on YouTube, mm -hmm. then you want to make sure that those keywords that they're searching for are in your content. Yeah. So it was then kind of a mix between a, what I thought was a really good tip and what people were searching for. Yeah. So even creating the content specifically to answer popular search phrases, as long as it's you know congruent with everything that you you know you're, you're helping the same audience and everything. That's really important. So now, any any tips for that? Hey, I want to say hey to work at home mommy who says tags are everything. It's good to see you guys. We can barely see the comments, so be sure to to uh, you know forgive us if we don't mention you uh, right off the bat. But we saw you guys log in, and we're glad you're here. If you have questions for Justin, please type them into the comment section. We have Mike. I think Mike's drinking in the bedroom. He is. And he'll just scream them out. He will. He'll yell yeah, it out. If yeah. he gets there. So hopefully he's wearing a towel or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm hoping he's not wearing a towel. Wow. It makes for okay. better video. Okay. You know. Yeah. So uh, you talked about the keywords and, and balancing that with the tip. Now, this is something where I struggle. Uh, I'm trying to find that like that middle ground. How do you find your middle ground between like a good tip, something your audience wants, versus no one searching for that right now? Well, what's really surprising is some of the videos that we delayed doing for so long. Things like. Adobe Premiere versus Final Cut. Right. Like that's a that's a scary topic to cover because sure. there's fanboys on either side, you know, or Mac versus PC. So it's 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 a scary thing because you don't want to put yourself out there. Yeah. But what we found is by sharing your thoughts on a topic, it's hard for people to argue with what you're thinking. Right. Like this is my opinion. Right. You can argue. Right. You know. So but yeah, by really sort of branching out on that level and then looking at the keywords and everything around it. But I guess if you come from a place where you're wanting to help people and you're wanting to share your knowledge and your advice and then look at the keywords around that, um, and I can see someone there has mentioned TubeBuddy. Yeah. The TubeBuddy is awesome. That that tool is fantastic. And I'm sure you've got a link that you can put in the... Yeah. yeah. Um, if you haven't heard of it, definitely check it out. Um, all of these, there's different tools that you can use to find out what people are searching for. And that's really the key. So work out what you'd like to talk about or do research as to how, you know, what people are struggling with and then create your videos and your content around that. Now, would that even uh, uh, apply to, let's say, a, a personal vlogger or someone growing an entertainment channel? Do we still need keywords uh, in, that, in that regard? So keywords are always going to play a part. We Welcome just... to live video, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to add him in the credits yeah, now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Keywords are always going to play a part in every video, but, and that's something that's really interesting at the moment because a lot of the large vloggers or bloggers, they're finding that they're losing subscribers and Big these time. sorts of things, and it's because they're not, they haven't needed to do any of these keywords right. or any of these descriptions. So if that's uh, what you're doing, then it's important to cover keywords and, and in your title and description of places that people can find you or places that you want to be found. So if it is that you're in a particular location, like Social Media Marketing World, then make yeah. sure you're tagging Social Media Marketing World yeah. in your tags and having it in your titles. And just caught up with Owen at Social Media Marketing World. Right, and it's and, all there. And that way it's there. So it's it's searchable. You know, you've, yeah. got, you've picture yourself searching to find your own videos. What would you search for? That's huge. I love that. And then start there. I love that. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, so let's dig into the keywords in a little bit. You're doing this keyword research, and maybe you're using TubeBuddy, which is a tool that we love. Uh, they've got a free track uh, on there, and I think there's some links in the description. If not, we'll get them to you later. So you're looking at this keyword, and it's got 4 billion searches, and this one has 300,000 searches, but it's maybe it's more relevant. What is the process that you use to determine which keywords should go into your title? So we use the um, Google Google Trends to see what people are actually searching for. Yeah. And we you just, start there? Uh, I think we normally start there. We'll also uh, use the Google search box. So you start typing into Google search things that you would look for and see what the suggested 
These yeah. are the pop up, the predictive and the or same. whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah the predictive stuff, and the same in YouTube as well because they can be different. So people will search different um, for Google and YouTube. Right. So these are like the places that we start. Then we start to test, and TubeBuddy is awesome for this because you can like even the difference in the case of that Adobe Premiere versus Final Cut Video. If we swap the two around. Just, just the same keywords, but swapping Premiere and, and Final Cut around, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. totally different search results, totally different ranking. That's interesting. So that's something where TubeBuddy can help out with that as well. Wow. Um, when, when you, you know, what are you looking for in the keyword? Are you looking for how many results there are? Are you looking at the relevancy for what ranks number one? What's... So you're looking for the amount of noise or competition on those keywords as well as well as relevancy and what people are searching mm -hmm. for. So it really mm -hmm. is a combination of those three things. Okay. Because if, you, if you're picking really, really competitive keywords or really popular keywords, it's gonna be harder to rank for those keywords. So you've gotta try, it's a combination of those three. You wanna find good keywords that aren't in a really competitive space, or if they are, at least you know that they're there. And, right, and, and you know you've you got extra work to do. That's it. Right, so right, I right. mean, obviously if you can rank in that space, that's even better, but yeah. you may need to rank for a few other things first or get some traction first on your video, right. and then adjust your keywords. And that's the other thing, is to go back and adjust your keywords. Trial them for a couple of weeks and see how your videos rank. If you've got a definite like if you've got a good video that's not ranking, then then go back and, and, and adjust the keywords and, and um, yeah. It's it's not set and forget. We we go back and, and look at look at our You know that's content. that's a real challenge for me because we all want to set and forget it. We mm -hmm. want to do the 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 infomercial situation where you just kind of like it's up there it's done and it's gone and i think yep. that's the approach and on that to I the take. next one yeah, yeah and on yeah. to the next i'll make the next one better yeah uh what are some what's that process that you use in terms of re-optimizing an old video so it says the process is exactly the same but so this is where TubeBuddy. this is really an ad for TubeBuddy. buddy geez phil yeah phil's wow. the guy at TubeBuddy. so yeah you guys are stoked so so this is really where that is awesome because it will show you where you're ranking for the different keywords. Mm -hmm. And when I say keywords or tags, I'm actually mean like key phrases. Don't just drop in a one word. It right. should be what people are searching for. So two, three, four words. Yep. Right. A keyword phrase might be Facebook live stream yep. or um, how to change a diaper if you're a family vlogger. Yep. Or something. So it might be that whole sentence. It's what people are going to type into the search bar, and the closest that you can get to to what people are actually typing in, then the faster your video is going to rank. Yeah. Yeah. So it, the process is the same for going back and re-ranking an older video um, because, but it's easier because once you've already been ranking for some, you'll see what's working. Yeah. And TubeBuddy will show you exactly what you're ranking currently for the different search terms or for the different tags. Yeah. And then you can, whichever ones aren't working, you can adjust those. Have you found using, a, using the TubeBuddy tool, if you guys haven't used it, uh, when you search in the keyword uh, tool that they have, you, you get some different numbers you get like your competitive score you get where it ranks and you get like where how you know who ranks in that where you get a lot of different information it can be overwhelming uh do you look for a certain keyword score you know because TubeBuddy will tell you hey this is a highly competitive keyword uh or it will say there's no competition on this but with your experience you're kind of going i know that word's a little bit more competitive than they're they're letting me know how do you balance out what the tool is telling you versus you know, your content strategy. So, so that's where the, the other two really come in. So your okay. Google search and your Google trends and your YouTube search because you can actually see whatever they're suggesting is what other people are going to click on. So yeah. if they start typing something out and see that Google or YouTube has suggested something, like, yeah, that's yeah, that's what I want, they'll click on that. Yeah. So that plays a big part as well as as well as the, the score and everything that you get. But it, 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 there is no perfect science to any of this. There is no perfect answer like TubeBuddy is helpful but it's not the like it's not everything right so um, now we're going the negative no we're not yeah kick him in the, <laughs> kick him in the tail right there yeah. um, it is it is a combination there is no perfect science behind any of this and you may just find that some of your videos rank really really well and others that you think will rank really well but you'll get you know, nothing for them. So yeah. it's, it is like, yeah, it's definitely not a perfect sign. The sales lion, it's good to see you out there. Paul Peck, it's good to see you out there. I want to give a shout out to some of you guys watching today. Um, and we appreciate you being here. Of course, with uh, uh, some of this, it's a little bit hard to see. Mike Sorry. Brown, uh, Abe Ricks, good to see you. And we see you every Monday. Abe Ricks is saying, when I do my tags, I will search up my videos or challenge that I do in the video and finish at the top of the video. Unfortunately, I can't really read that. I didn't really I mean, read that I mean, effectively. Did that, did that, did that, that make sense to that you? It <laughs> disappeared pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's hard, but we're glad you guys are watching. And if you're enjoying this content, hit that share button. Get the video out on Twitter. Tell your friends that you're watching a great, a great tutorial. So we've talked a little bit about um, the keyword tags and how it's sort of a, a give and take. You've got to sort of like take this and balance it out with that. And I think that that's huge. One of the things that I've always been torn up, guys, is I've, ch I've tried to make it an exact science. I really have. And that's the way my brain works. My brain wants to see uh, something that is just you know, do this, do that, do this. But it's really, you're kind of doing this, going back over here, yep. and then checking that out. So just keep that in mind as you guys are picking the keywords that you're, um, that you're going for. And if you have any questions for Justin, be sure to type them out. Mike will shout them out from back there, and, uh, and we'll get to them as we, uh, as we continue to move along. Now, outside of the keywords and the tags, what else? Probably two other really important things. We'll start with the first one, which is your thumbnails, which is an obvious one and then consistency, like both another really obvious one, but these are two really critical parts of your YouTube channel. Your thumbnail is the reason that people are gonna click your video. Yeah, absolutely. If you show up in search, there could be 20 other videos on that first page that all say pretty much the same right. thing. So right. something, you need to have something in your video that stand, on your thumbnail that stands out and make people wanna click it. Yeah. And whether it's consistency with all your others, so they may have watched some of your other videos and go, yeah, that one was good, so yeah, that's the same guy, yep, we'll, yeah. we'll watch that. But I guess the key is to have the words big and bold in your thumbnail yeah. of what your video is going to cover. Yeah. So they're just seeing, they're getting this reinforcement that the title is what I want, the thumbnail, yep, that, that answers that as well. So, you know, there's a good chance that when I click this video, I'm not going to waste my time. Everyone's right. there for the quick answer or the quick entertainment or whatever it is. You don't want to waste people's time. And the biggest thing where people drop off is if they're not in the right video or, or you know, you're know you not answering their question. So, or you didn't answer it fast enough. I find right. that they'll watch two minutes of your video, <laughs> but if you're entertaining for two minutes and then you're gonna get to it, they're gonna they're gonna log off before that two minutes. Yep, took too long, on to the next even one. Though it's, even though your answer is 30 seconds away, they'd yep. rather spend another minute searching for someone that didn't waste their initial two minutes. Yes, 100%. There yep. is so much of that psychology on YouTube. Yeah, the whole, like, it is insane. Yeah. Like, and it's changing all the time. It, it used is. to be that you wanted to do really, really short videos, quick content, not even introduce yourself. It would just be, here's the tip, or here's the answer. Yes. And so people were like, oh, that's good. And they yes. would subscribe then yeah. because you didn't waste any of their time. There you go, everyone has ADD, definitely. Yeah. So, but now the, you can actually, well, the way that YouTube ranks is really around watch time. So you want to keep the viewers on your videos or on your page for as long as you can. Yeah. And there's a couple of different strategies to that, but I guess the longer, so creating longer videos is the way, but you want to have videos that are engaging all the way to the end and yeah. keeping people on to the end without dangling that carrot and say, I'm going to tell you the answer, but it's at the end. Right. You, know, you want to help them all the way through so that they're getting content and getting knowledge or help all the way through. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about optimizing your video for watch time. We just did a video about that on this channel last week. Came to the core, the truth of the matter is that if people aren't watching your videos, your videos aren't good enough to be watching. And we all kind of all strikes us at the core a little bit because we put our life and, and our heart and soul into these. How do you structure a video or format a video so that, that you can keep the viewer watching from beginning to middle to end? Okay, so our current structure is that we will match our title or, or straight away in the video, we won't say, hey, it's Justin anymore. If you're watching any of the previous, like the older videos, then, um, then yeah, we did that. Now we skip all of that and we say, we jump straight to the problem or straight to what, the, the, yeah. the, 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 what we're gonna talk about in the video. Right, right, right. Then we'll have a really quick, if you're new here, subscribe um, to get that initial, you know, kick along in case they, the tip doesn't actually, you know, isn't what Materialize they're Materialize for them, right. sure. Yeah, that's yeah. a better way of putting it. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll jump into, you want to explain to them how the video is going to roll out. Like if you paid for a presentation, then you want to look at, you know, you, you're going to explain to people, we're going to cover my five thoughts or the top yeah. three things. It's like an overview. Here's yeah. what we're going to cover in this video today. So you're meeting that expectation yeah. and they know what they can expect throughout the video. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so then they're going to stick around if for your top three thoughts or for the top five things. You want them hanging around to the end, which is, you know, why, why we use numbers a lot in our, in our videos. Like three things, five ways, yep. that sort of thing. Yep. And if you've got a free option, maybe put it at the end so that a lot of people on YouTube will come for the free thing. If you say the free, you know, whatever the free solution is, like use OBS, and then you're going to talk about Wirecast, the, you know, a paid option later. Right, right, right. The free ones will stop there, which will kill your watch time. So there's a, there's a heap of different strategies that you can look at, but you want to keep people as long. Want to go under? As long. 
as long as you can. Live, live TV, live, live video, but you're doing fine. Did you fine. want a wife? You're fine. You want to say hi? It's the YouTube audience. This is your chance. Hi. Hang on, do it, do it one more time. Say hi. Hi. You're a star. <laughs> 16,000 people will see you before the end of the week. Millions. Millions. It's going viral. It's in. Yeah, she's yeah. going to come after me for that, uh, that you, money. You, you know? didn't get into sauna. I know. I didn't get the waiver signed. Ah, you know? It's the so, simple things. It is. It's mm. those little things that come back to bite you in the end, you know? So this is a really interesting model. I use it a lot in mine where the first thing we do is we, we hit them back with the value statement. You're in the right place. Yes. Uh, eat, trade, travel. It's good to see you. And he's all, squirrel. Yeah, absolutely. You got to keep them focused on your video. But then you overview them. That's what you're saying. Now, yep. this is a technique that I've picked up at the National Speakers Association and some of the other speaker training that I've gone through. You tell them, even webinars, you tell them what you're going to do, then you do it, and then you tell them what you've done. Yep. Now, we haven't gotten to that third part yet, but for the most part, you're letting them know, hey, now that you're here, here's what you're going to see today. And so you're sort of putting them in this spot to receive the rest of your information. Yep. Okay. And I think the recap is a really good, or the overview again at the end, to wrap yep. it all up, is yep. a really good way. You know, in case you missed all of that information, this is what you need to know. This is the key thing you need to take away. Yeah. But then the most important thing is what do you want them to do next? Okay. So giving them permission to go and try it. So go and give it a go and then come back in the comments and let me know how you Yeah, went. that's cool. Or, you know, here's another video on screen that's going to help. If you like this one, then check out the one, you know, this other one. And you That'll call them to well. action. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a... Uh it's a challenge as uh, for me in my videos I, I notice a lot of dips in the watch time which means that people are skipping yeah they're going to the end and which is fine with me but then I get these comments that are like how do you do this mm. and I'm like well if you'd watch the video That's it. you know do you deal with that as well do you embrace them because hey it's a comment or does is that an indication for you that we need to like make this more watchable it's like comments are a good metric or a good way to grow your YouTube as well. So by answering as many comments, whether they're good or bad, yeah. it's still a comment. YouTube doesn't know if it's a good comment or a bad comment. Right. It's same with the thumbs up, right? So, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's yeah. it's it's engagement. That's it. So that, that's why it's really important to encourage people to comment and to encourage them. You know, if you found this video helpful, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. It makes a big difference. People are like, wow, that's awesome. You know, hey, the video did help me. I will give this a thumbs up. Yeah. Or I will say thank you or yeah. whatever it might be. So all of those little things. I said there's not just one thing. You can go do this one thing and your YouTube will blow up. Right. So it, it's, a, it's, it's a long game. It's levers and dials. Yep. It really is. And it's dialing them in. It's, it's getting the, uh, the oven to 350, but you also have the right altitude. You, you know what I mean? To make sure that you're doing it right. Which is changing. All the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And the technology is changing. The attention spans are changing. Yeah. The way that we consume is changing. So YouTube is really not, like you said, a set it and forget it yeah. environment. You've mm -hmm. got to be constantly tracking. What are some of the things that you do, any conventions that you use inside of your videos? For example, I use lower thirds at about a minute um, that pop up and have a fun fact or say, hey, like this video if you agree or something like that. Those are just conventions that we use to engage the eye, uh, pop a sound up on the ear, anything like that that you're using to keep people watching through the meat of the video. We try to make sure that they're not just talking head, not just me, blah, 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 yeah. that we're showing them things, showing them everything that we mention, we're showing in B-roll or overlay footage. So yeah. if we're talking about a camera setting, show a shot of me making that camera setting adjustment. Or if we're talking about a specific setting in a piece of software, we'll bring up a screen share and show that. So we don't necessarily bring up, make sure you subscribe, all those sorts of things during the video. We haven't tried it, so I don't know if that's a, you right. know, how that works or, yeah. But you've got to keep the viewer interested. So the content will do that, but if the content is just you talking, it's going to be pretty boring for them. So you've got to keep breaking that up. But it could be as simple as just zooming in, yeah, like, a, like yeah. a jump cut. Or... We, we use a, a technique called the cut and zoom technique, yeah. where you're shooting in, in 1080, but we're editing in 720 and then kind of zooming in, zooming out, all digitally. It's all a digital zoom, cut and yeah. zoom technique. And that at least engages the eye. It keeps the eye moving. Uh, these, we were talking about this with Nick Nimmin the other day. Nick Nimmin's a great YouTuber. Check out his channel. But we call it lag. You know, and when you're doing this in your video, when you're going, um, uh, and let's get to that, ah, 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 and you're, that's the kind of stuff that needs to be kind of cut out. Yep. What is your process for eliminating lag to keep the video moving? Boom, 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 boom. The first thing is most people aren't able to create a video in one take. Some people can. Some people are absolutely awesome at just sitting down and going, I'm going to create a video on this and 
press record and can just get right get the video. Slam out. it out. Yep. For most people, though, that is a uh, a big freak out point, and you know it's it's a big barrier for them to creating the videos. I can't do it, and uh, you'll probably find that most people can't. So I break the videos down into paragraphs. So whether it's dot points, I'm going to cover off this one first, yep. this one next, and I'll focus on getting that to where I want it, and I won't move on to the next section until I'm happy with that. So. It just makes the video easier to create. Yes, there's a bit more work to do in the editing, but every time you're going between one paragraph and the next or one dot point in the next, that's your opportunity to either show something on screen to so people don't see that, or you, you do that jump zoom cut. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. And just get point, out get out the ums and, and os yeah, and, so and any whatnot. pause between it is gone. It's like it so it looks like you've done a big, you know, one take, one fluid video. Uh, AK Boost Barbecue, good to see you and thank you for logging in. Believe it or not, AK, I just shot a video and gave you a massive shout out. That'll probably be on the channel in the next two weeks. So thank you for logging in. And guys, if you do log in and you do engage and you do share, you will get a shout out on this channel. We This channel doesn't exist without you guys. Uh, and, and so this is your channel. And the more you engage, the more we're going to engage with you. So thank you guys so much for logging in. Now, um, you're talking about what to cut right uh what about anything that you got you talk about adding b-roll yeah. do you add any sound effects or do you add any and i already know kind of the answer because i watch your channel do you add anything uh additional like that to sort of uh just surprise the viewer or to, to uh, like a pattern interrupt sometimes but not very often mm -hmm. it really depends on the video and the circumstances if we're going to point out things and we'll bring a little arrow up on screen and yeah, so yeah, that yeah. we'll you know we'll have it so it's a it's a visual and it's an audible sound um but not not really like yeah i don't know whether it's laziness or amount of time that it takes to do those extra things sure um but i guess back to the other point was it really led into is the consistency so yeah you don't need to create the most polished videos you need to focus on the content your presentation and doing it consistently even if your videos aren't polished and, and they look pretty bad do them consistently because you can always grow people yeah. won't subscribe to you uh, if you're going to upload a video randomly here and randomly there, if they know that you're going to do one to two videos a week and they like your videos, they're going to subscribe. Yeah. If you're doing one a week and then nothing for a couple of weeks and then might do another one over here, there's no real reason for people to subscribe. Think of it like a TV show. You're going to keep tuning back in to watch that TV show. So you, you want to be consistent and you want to tell people that, you know, I'll see you next week or I'll see you, right. you know next time so they know that there is something more coming amy schmidauer talked about this at uh, in her presentation at social media marketing world is that uh, welcome the viewer into a continuum you know as opposed to uh the like treating each video as a la carte you know so welcome back to the channel and yes. we'll see you next week or we've been talking about yeah. so that there's this flow and 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 the viewer is walking into the river as opposed to jumping into the pool for the first time. Yep. So you talked about going back to this uh, shooting in paragraphs. Now, I've talked about this before. We talked about shooting in bursts where you're looking at the script, looking back at the camera, bursting, and then looking back at the script again. Are you using a teleprompter? Do you use, I mean, how well do you write these things out? Tell us about the prep work that goes into creating these, these incredible videos. So I guess... The quick answer to that is it depends on the type of video. Uh -huh. If it's some, one of the videos where I'm just sharing my thoughts on a topic or I'm answering questions or you know, a, a popular, something I know the information backwards yeah. and there's no stats or, or numbers or anything that I really need to you know, make sure are 100% correct, right. then I'll just do it off cuff. Okay. So no teleprompter and the notes that are the paragraphs that I've written down will literally be talk about the things that you like about Adobe Premiere. Like, so key to instead of writing lines, instead of writing Adobe Premiere is the best thing to do. Write literally write talk about this. Yeah. Talk about that. And that way when you're reading it, you're sort of the ideas are naturally mm. coming. It activates your brain. The other way, when you go say this, when when the script actually says Adobe Premiere is a da 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 da, you're gonna find yourself searching. And when you're searching, your eyes wander. This is NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. You're gonna go and you're gonna do something like ah, uh, and then come back to it. And everyone on camera is gonna see that. Yeah. So I love that that approach to it. Um, when you're, you see, it depends on what type of video yeah. you're doing. Is that based on the knowledge that so, you're bringing to the table? So I guess there are some circumstances where you need to be very specific on the types of videos that you're creating. So 
if it's a sales video or something where you need to, to tick off all these points and really the wording that you're using is critical, then I would, yeah, I, I do use a teleprompter for some of those videos. So it really depends on the type of video. If it is something where you're just giving your thoughts or your feedback on that, then those are your thoughts. They can be a bit scattered. They can yeah, yeah. be, um, yeah. But if it's a sales video or a polished piece of content that you want for maybe the front page of your website, yeah. then the wording could be could be critical. And that's a big difference, right? The, uh, the video you're gonna put on your website is not gonna necessarily be a subscriber uh, acquisition video, yeah. right? Your objective is going to be different. So you're gonna structure your video a little bit different. Yeah. When it comes to the, uh, the videos for your channel, are you making videos specifically? Um, B. Leon Jarhead, great to see you. Do you know Jarhead Six? I know. I've seen them in the comments. I think so. Jarhead Six is awesome. Uh, good to see you here. He, I know he watches both the channels. When you're when you're creating your videos, are there videos that you're making specifically to to attract subscribers versus um, maybe get leads? or sell Amazon products. I know that our, our, our friend Sean Cannell sells a lot of Amazon product on yep. his channel, yep. and so those are structured a little bit differently than the, hey, subscribe to me. Yep. What are your thoughts there? I think for us, a big thing for us is to be authentic, and I only talk about the products that I like or that I genuinely use. We will very rarely do a video, I think we never do a video on a product that is bad or yeah. something that is gonna get us a good, aven uh, uh, good revenue, right. good um, Amazon dollar. So I only recommend the products that I use. Uh, I'll always get the products and test them yeah. and all of these sorts of things. So you'll see that there's like, I'm doing a few 360 videos. I love 360. Yeah. Like whether it's just something that's fun or whether it actually takes off, they're good fun to play it's with. It's fun, yeah. So those are the videos that like, you've got to enjoy making your videos. If you don't enjoy talking about the things that you're talking about, yeah. then your audience will see that you're doing this for a hidden agenda or yeah. for a sale or for a commission. So you've got to enjoy talking about the things that, that you're talking about. Don't believe the hype, guys. There is this hype that, that video watchers and YouTubers are dumb. We've been dumbed down and, and, and all this kind of stuff. It is not true. This is elitism. Uh, that that's you know just pervasive in, in Western culture. And that's part of my media background sort of talking. The consumer, the video viewer today is more savvy than they've ever been. With YouTube Red, I can watch your video, uh, swipe it down, continue to listen to it, confirm what you just said, call bullshit or not, yeah. and then make a decision from there. That's it. And all within 30 seconds. So don't try to railroad mm. your, your viewers. And this is something that I, I've, I've made that mistake. I've made the mistake of like, I'm gonna review every product I buy versus only the ones that make it through, yeah. you know, into my production line. So that's really great uh, information. We're kind of wrapping up here. We're getting close to 40 minutes, guys. Ask your questions below. We're about to jump into some Q&A and maybe Mike can help us out with that in just a moment. Uh, so write your questions down. Last question that I have for you before we go into Q&A is uh, how do you ask for subscribers. You, you, you mentioned in the beginning. Do you bring that back in the middle? Do you bring it back in the end? What is your process for it and do you see it as part of making a good video or do you see it as effective for getting subscribers? I think the two kind of go hand in hand because in order to get your videos seen, you'll want subscribers. Yeah. So it is always chicken and the egg. We do ask for subscribers. I guess and anyone creating videos, there's a lot of time that goes into making these videos and you're giving them away for free. So yeah. you're sharing your knowledge, you're sharing your expertise, you're sharing your thoughts and opinions. So it's really important that you are not rewarded, but you know, if you're interested in the videos, then come back and you know, we, we'd like to yeah. keep helping you. Yeah. So at the start of our videos, we will we'll do an intro and say, this is the video that you've come here to see. Um, if you're new here, so which means that, back to what you were saying, yeah. come, come and join the journey. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button, then we'll get into the content. At the end of the video, we will say, if you found this video helpful, then make sure you click that subscribe button and then there's another video linked or whatever. So yeah. we're, okay. we're, we're, we're asking them if we've helped them. We're giving them then, yes, oh, that was a good video. Yep, so you're encouraging them if you've helped them yes. to to. Um, and you subscribe. sort of want to assume that you made a good video, yeah. right? Because while you're shooting it, you don't really know. And you, don't ask them a question like, is this a good video? Yeah. No, no, this is a good video. Yes. But, but if it helped you, it's gonna help someone, but if this helped you, then consider subscribing. It's such a great point that you make because so many people on YouTube were not raised by good parents. 
and they they will leave you the nastiest comments, right? Me and a friend of mine used to say, um, never criticize yourself. That's what YouTube comments are for. Definitely. You know, so when you open up an invitation to, did you like this video? answer in the comment section below you're going to get the trolls and imagine a new person coming to your your channel and all they see are the trolls is this video sucked your mom sucks your whole family sucks you're, you're going to lose potential viewers so be really careful i think is is what you're saying about what you're asking them to do but also just don't take them too personally like the, sure. fa the faster you grow or the more you grow the more you're opening yourself up to that yeah i mean i always get called chris martin i get picked on about that's how my teeth Chris look Martin and, is fantastic. Yeah, well, I, he, he must be really good looking. Wow. I don't, well, well, he is. Yeah. He's an incredibly so, attractive man. So, but there's there's a lot of um, oh. <laughs> there's um, yeah, there's a lot of negativity in some in some uh, in, for some people. Like they get a heap of negative stuff in their comments. So it's really important that you just you know, it's a comment. It's a positive thing because it's helping. It's, it's engagement. It's engagement. And I'll tell you, you know who's really good at engaging these bad comments is Steve Dotto. Yeah. Uh, I've sort of like learned from him. At first, I was I was kind of this proud character. We sort of talked about that earlier, where someone says, "Oh, this was the stupidest video I've ever seen," and I would comment back, "You're stupid, stupid nice. face." You know, and and That's sort a good of, call. yeah, and you know what? I yeah. actually I have a bumper sticker. I have a whole line of stupid face coming out. But the, you know what that does? It invites more people to jump in, and now you've got like this whole thing going. Whereas what Steve Dotto will do is, um, we'll say, uh, I know all my videos are stupid, but thank you for watching for four minutes. Mm. You know, or, or whatever. It was so dumb that you watched it enough to leave a comment. He kind of shows his personality side. Yeah. And taking that approach, remembering that it's not personal, that it's like, this is what these guys come on to YouTube to do. They mm. come on to sort of like get a rise out of people who who are building channels. Yeah. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're engaging those comments. But back to your point, when you're asking that question, guys, ask it in a way that gets sort of the response that you're hoping for. Definitely. You know? So we appreciate you guys being here. Let's go to some Q&A uh, right now. Before we do that, Mike, let's bring Mike on camera so you guys Come know. On Mike. Mike is the guy we that, that runs the channel uh, over at Primal Video. We're, we're sharing a mic. We'll just, we'll just get this, in. This doesn't look awkward, does it? No, that's the, that's the nipple mic yeah, is right. what it is, and we believe in it. We believe in you it know, here. I'll hold it. Cool. All so right, let's, uh, let's ask some questions. All right. Well, we had one a while back from B. Leon asking what is B-roll when you're running through Great some question. of the, the shots. So, so B-roll is the overlay footage. So it's um, so the A-roll they call your primary video, like you're watching now. Right and now. if we were going to show you uh, a cutaway shot or a behind-the-scenes shot or anything that we mentioned when we're talking about Premiere, if we're showing you a screenshot of Adobe Premiere or how it works, hitting this microphone, then uh, that's classed as B-roll. So it's anything other than what you're watching as the primary camera. And a typically B-roll is laid up on top of the audio. So we continue to talk, yes. you continue to hear these noises, but it fades out and it goes to us at Social Media Marketing World, it goes to the factory. A great place to see where B-roll is is go watch the news. As you watch the news, they'll, they have what's called video news reels, and they'll talk about this guy who went out on the town and did this thing, Orange Juice Factory. You'll see a lot of use of B-roll there. Cool. Uh, AK Boost Barbecue asked, uh, how are you asking for likes? Oh, so great question. you covered a little bit of that, but yeah. So I guess with... We don't want to give them 10 things to do at the end of a video. Right. You want to give them, at most, I would say two things. So we will pick and choose. And we'll, like subscribe is the priority. So you know, if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Right. You can quickly follow that up with or give this video a thumbs up. Um, or, but, but then if you want to send them to another video or you want them to do something or to go and subscribe on your website, that's you know yeah. that's where it becomes too long. So yeah. you, you want to keep it short. Plus you're taking them off YouTube now. That's right. That's that's a new commitment. That's stop what you're doing yep. and do this new thing now. So they got it's really got to be worth it. Yeah. So subscribe, I would say, is the priority. Um, you could get them to do a thumbs up if it's going to be quick. Like if you can say it quick. If you're going to take five minutes to ask them to give the video a thumbs up, then it's definitely not worth it. Um, but work out where you want them to go next and using the end cards to send them to another relevant video, whether it's yours or whether it's someone else's, um, you know, you just want to help them on that journey. They're at your video for a reason. So if you've got other videos on that same topic that are going to be useful, then send them there or to someone else's video that's yeah. on the similar topic. I'll tell you, we increased our likes 273% by with lower thirds. So I try to get into my content within a minute. 
and then within that, after that minute, I try to say something poignant, like always remember to do this before you get started. And then we have a pop-up that'll say, yes. like if you agree, and then, you know, kind of whatever I just said. So as we're shooting the video, we, we try to keep that in mind, say something poignant or, or witty or, or tweetable, and then ask them for likes simultaneously. And that, AK, that shot my likes up. We don't, we don't do it in every video, which is, I don't know why. Uh, it's part of why he's got 30,000 and I'm at 20. I'm hovering right around 20. Uh, but uh, ask him a and, and find a neat way. Hey, you know, uh, you, you're, AK's got a cooking channel. So it's like, hey, for this barbecue sauce, make sure that you add cayenne pepper, but only a, tablesp a tablespoon. Boom. Like if you agree, too much cayenne will ruin the sauce or something like that. And you'll get people that want to engage with that. Cool. Uh, As we all night had a good one. Uh, so his channel is about analog photography. Uh, which is not usually a trending topic. How can he grow his channel? Oh, that's a so, great. That's a great question. Yes, how do you grow a topic that isn't that isn't trending and and uh, the search terms may not be that strong? Well, do you want to tackle this one? Let's clip this on you. There we go. No pressure here. This is improv. This is no improv. Pressure. I have no idea what's going to happen. This, this is live. I'm terrified. What do I what do I do with my hands? Oh, I don't no. know. I knew this was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Look, I think the reality is. Um, some some channels just aren't going to grow as fast. If you don't have the yep. audience or, or the sheer quantity or numbers behind it, um, then there is no way that you're going to find the search traffic. And you can see that by looking at Google Keyword Planner. So um, if you don't see the search traffic in there, then don't expect to get the results like, uh, like other channels are going to get. I mean, there are channels that blow ours out of the water. Like, you, you look at ours and the growth we've had in, you know, a year. The, the people have had that in, like, you know, a week or a month. Um, and that really comes down to... Jarhead, don't go yet. Don't go yet. We'll answer your question next. It is next, actually. I've got you next. How's uh, that for retention? Don't you, leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't log off yet. <laughs> Stick around. Yeah. So um, you bring up a good point. I'll come back to it. I want to get Jarhead's question in about the keyword research planner. But go. let's answer uh, Jarhead's question. Jarhead's question? Cool. Uh, so quantity versus quality, which is more important? Or did you have another one that later on, Jarhead? Uh, that's a good one. Quality versus quantity, because I know Jarhead is right now producing about three videos a week, and they're all roughly the same. Same background, you know, that sort of thing. And, and I, we've talked before offline that he's that's the, the strategy right now. It's consistency, consistency, consistency. What are your guys' thoughts on on three times a week videos are okay, or once a week, phenomenal video. Yeah, um, from my perspective, I would much rather spend the time doing the keyword planning, the research, and structuring up a solid video, shoot that out, and get it out like regularly. If that's once a week or twice a week, uh, I would do that over three, four, or five times a week, hands down. Um, the, the, the return you get, or, or the, the, the amount of traffic you get from a well-optimized and well-planned video, over the life of that video is so much higher than if you were to just turn out like you know five or t five or six videos a week. So that's my thoughts, Justin. No, I would I would agree. And <laughs> and in regards to the planning and preparation for your video, is yeah, there better <laughs> mics than that, guys? <laughs> this is his first, this is his first time on camera. <laughs> we finally let him out from the cage in the back. Yeah, and yeah, now he's, yeah. he's so and, excited. And look you know? what he does. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I definitely think quantity over quality, but at the same time, consistency plays a big part of it. I mean, if you're not uploading at least once a week, then your growth is going to be hard. Yes, it, it, no, you're not going to get any momentum. Hey, Royal Report, where have you been, bro? We've been live for 40 minutes. Uh, we, we can finally get started now we, that we the Royal waiting. Report. Yeah, all right, hockey. Hockey is here. Uh, with Jarhead's channel specifically, too, Jarhead, I would suggest that you... Increase your quality by, by getting some pre-made digital assets. Go check out Nick Nimmin. Him and I work on a product called uh, Video Branding Elements. You can go to tubertools.com and check that out. But having like a great lower third and then a great what we call full screen graphic. So it just kind of takes over the whole screen and you can add some text in there that it's got a bumper sticker quote in it or, or, or maybe you're just showing off. He does handguns, so this handgun versus that handgun. Breaking up the... Uh, talking head a little bit yes, with yep. some digital graphics that are exciting. Uh, you buy them one time and you just drag and drop them into each video. 
you know, I think could really help your quality, but still allowing you to produce three videos a week. It'll actually allow you to produce your videos faster as well once you've got the set template. Yeah. So then stick to that template while it's working, trial it. If if you find you're not getting the growth, then change up your template. And you guys use, when you talk about te t template, you're talking about like first say this and then ask for subs and do this, right? Yeah. So we talked about that. You guys have a pretty extensive sys like process. You have checklists and whatnot. Yep. How do you manage that? Is that in a project manager? Is that like on a sheet of paper? Do you have it memorized now? Like what's... It's really a mess, actually. Uh, no, it's, the structure's there. But there's only the two of us right now. So what we're doing is getting in the process of automating a lot of that and, um, and outsourcing some of it too. So we have to get in, in and tidy it up. But we basically have, we use Trello and we basically have a few different streams. Same uh, as Tim Schmoyer, I think he uses Trello as well. Yeah, we just have a ton of content ideas in, in one column. And then when we're getting ready to structure them up, we'll drag them over to the next column. And then when we're... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't actually know how high up we are. <laughs> yeah. We, could, this could we should show them. We should show them. That's a good way to yeah. lose my iPhone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 12 stories. Let's see how good yeah. this clip is. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So we have a, we basically use Trello to track it through. And then when we get to the third column, I think we start writing the scripts and structuring it up. And then I'll dump them in the next column. Justin will film it. Uh, then we have another few for editing and all that sort of stuff. So we basically track it through that process. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Let's do a couple more questions right. and we'll wrap it up. Work at home mummy. Uh, oh, great. Work at home. How you doing? <laughs> said, uh, someone told me I need two or three channels because I like makeup slash uh, editing, etc. What do you guys think? So a mix of topics. Interesting one. You can definitely cover a broad range of topics as long as there's probably an encompassing topic that you're helping someone with. I mean, so someone like Roberto Blake, he has an over overarching um, topic of helping people create awesome content, graphics, um, all of those, you know, yeah. it's creating awesome. And inside of that, you'll have graphic design, you'll have video editing. So you can definitely do it, but the more niche I feel that you can be, then people know to come to you for X. Yeah. You, you become that person, the go-to for that person. I agree. So. I'll tell you guys the biggest channel, let's go to iSight's question next. Uh, Herman is a big friend of the channel and somebody that we really love. Uh, but to finish up on that thought is, what were we talking about? Niching. Niching down. Uh, the biggest mistake I made in my channel was I started off with website design and SEO content. My channel, literally, I upload these videos, I come back in three months, 10,000 subs. Had no idea. So I had no idea how to duplicate that growth other than just throw more videos up. So I threw up a Snapchat video. Actually, I did some YouTube content. And then after that, I threw a Snapchat video up. And then after that, I threw up some more web design and click funnels videos. There was no process. Maybe there's like this overarching online marketing groove, but at the end of the day, work at home, uh, mommy, it's been detrimental to my channel because nobody knows what they're logging in for. When I go to Roberto Blake's channel, I know it's going to be on creativity and productivity. And even though that's high, we're going to be talking about cameras, Photoshop, colors, branding, that sort of thing. Uh, when I go to a, a makeup channel, I certainly don't want to see um, your your baby pictures next week. Like now all of a sudden it's a family vlog. Yep. So I'm a big believer in niching down. Now I am because I saw how it's hurting my current channel. The current channel, we're going to do only video tips from now on. And then I'm starting a separate channel called How to Grow Your Consulting Business. And that's where I'm going to focus on sales and different online marketing techniques. So I'm going to say absolutely niche down, start three channels if you need to, but think about how much work that's really going to entail for you. Is that is that really possible? Are you going to go three, grow three crappy channels or are you going to have some real, like a real business model there? So there's some things to think about. The only other thing I can say on that is be clear and share all the time with what your goal is. So what are you here to, I'm going to talk this way into the microphone. Yeah, okay. Into the, um, like we help people create videos. So we are going to talk about 360 cameras. We are going to like, which they may not be interested in. So we are not so niche. Like video is our niche, but that's a pretty big niche. Sure, sure. But we're helping them with it. We're helping them with their buying decisions. We're, but at the same time, it's all the stuff that we're excited to talk about. Yeah. So we, we're, our niche is that, but our, our 
sort of overall purpose with the channel is to help people with their videos. Yeah, get better so, results with video faster. So it, that encompasses 360 editing, all of that sort of do stuff. Do you ever, you know, personal question, I'm going to jump in. Do you ever uh, cha are challenged by, oh, well, Sean Cannell just did this, or Nick Nimmin just did that, or Roberto Blake just did that. Do you guys ever get challenged by that and then let that affect, like, oh, well, we're not going to do this video or, or anything like that? Well, we have seen, like, I think we ran out of lighting video or Sean ran out of lighting video and we all sort of came out around the same time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's all, like, it's my thoughts and my opinions. Yes, which, like, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. Like, if it was the exact same five lights, then that's, you know, maybe a little different. Suspicious. And, and I guess, um, yeah. to, to add to that as well, I mean, I love Sean's videos. Like, yeah. We, yeah. We, will, we will link to them in the end cards of our video, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Because it's a different perspective. And, and, that's and sometimes he's, he's recommending different lights and stuff. So it's yeah. like, oh, well, I mean, this is our perspective. But, you know, Sean knows what he's talking about, too. And, yeah. and that's he, what he's he introduced us to so. some awesome things, like tripod mounts and things that we've seen on his channel. Go, that's awesome. We're going to go and test that out. And yeah. we'll then on recommend yeah. those. Yeah. So yeah. It, we're it not, all, like, this, I won't, don't see it as competition or yeah. any of that. We're all, we're all excited about the same things and we're all helping people around the same or Yeah, I think that's as long as your intention is not to sort of hijack somebody else's uh, yeah. show. Yeah. You, you know yeah. what I mean? And I think you can't be arrogant enough to think that your viewers are only going to be watching your channel for yeah. video either. I mean... That's a great point. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a... Just uncover that. Let's just, Thanks, let's take it off him. Just, just, he can't uh, handle it. Use it, it. Yeah, we'll put it on your sleeve. On the right. sleeve I'll mic. Put it here, All so right, let's go to Eyesight Bill. A couple more questions, so Herman. We want to get to your question. Eyesight Bill had two questions. Good. The first one I'm not too happy about, though. This one here is Justin an Aussie or a Kiwi. I saw that in there. What, oh. What's the. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. Yes. That's like asking someone's age. Not really, no. <laughs> I, Aussie, definitely Aussie. That's All good right. to know because I'm going to sit here and pretend like I knew. Uh, you know, I can't tell the difference. I'm like, I thought you guys were from Britain. So, well, it's like well, yeah. me. Oh, <laughs> I've had so many people this week say, oh, you're from England. Dude, I, I the first time I met uh, Pauline Stockhausen, uh, she's in social media. I've known her for years now. First time I met her, I asked her if she was living uh, near Martin Shervington, who's from the UK and she very politely was like no no sweetie I'm from Australia nice. yeah. you know so well, it's like me asking you where whereabouts in Canada are you from you know? yeah yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah I'm a boot uh, yeah. you know <laughs> well, it's the same thing right yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's out there's yeah. another yeah he's gone well yeah. now it's our show yeah. so uh, yeah what do you want to talk about I don't know uh, just, any other questions yeah uh, he's, back. he's back all right this is yeah all right um, you're getting a lot of notifications on that phone there Oh, I pressed the wrong button. I was trying uh, to use my filters there. Sure. We're going to move into the dance party oh, cool. segment. It's happening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's finally. Happening. I don't dance. That's right. I'm not dancing. All right. Okay. Okay. That is me I'm at a dance club, as a matter of fact. You know what I mean? Just the bobbing? This guy. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. foot right tapping. <laughs> the, the whole body's not moving, just the foot tapping. The foot tapping. Yeah. That's why yeah. at the clubs, I did really well with the waitresses. Nice. But uh, nice. rarely came home. You were really, tripping really... them over with your foot? That's how you... That's yeah. what's, we called it an attention grabber. Okay. That's, that's how we say it in the marketing world. Okay. Snappy headline, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I say Bill's actual question was, what's your video upload and promotion sequence? That's a good question. Okay. Um... Upload and production secrets. Promotion. 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 Uh, we will upload in as high a quality possible as we can. So at the moment, we're currently shooting everything in 4K. We'll edit 4K. We'll upload 4K. So yes, the file sizes are huge. So you want to have decent uh, internet for that. Um, we'll upload as private, so that our, not unlisted, so that our um, the date and time the countdown, and doesn't, the countdown yeah. doesn't start. Um, we will normally probably have two or three at the most up there in private and then we'll go through all the then Mike will go through all the keyword research um, which actually probably started beforehand so sure we, but still in process yeah right yep. still sort of honing it out because it is changing so we want to know that when when we're going live with the video that it is the, the latest in case anything changes I guess in, working in you know the live video and and helping people with the video things change all the time yeah so we, yeah. I found that just with my, I did a video on uh, Facebook Live two-person broadcasts, I right? The same one, yeah. uh, Going from two-person live to Facebook Live with two people. I think I uploaded with Facebook Live with two people, but then after doing, after talking to you at Social Media Marketing World, I found a different, uh, a better uh, structure uh, using Google and Google Trends, and so I changed it. What are your thoughts on changing it after it's public, changing the title? Give it a couple of weeks. Before you do Before that. Before you do it, yeah. You want to let it like settle in, get marinate, you know, sucked up into the uh, yeah. into the algorithm, yeah, um, and just see what comes out. 
Um, but sometimes, like, we've got videos that'll take, you know, two weeks to start ranking. Like, they'll basically, you'll have the initial peak, and then it'll drop off right. to next to nothing, and then it'll just start ticking back up again. Yeah. And then you look, like, 18 months later, and it's still going on that. So, um, yeah, so I would always give it a couple of weeks, but then if you notice it's not performing like you, you want, then maybe two, three weeks later, have another look at the keywords and take another stab at it. Just change them up. Like, do the keywords, tags, and titles. Um, yeah. That's great. That's good to know because I, I, you know, I, it feels awkward changing it like so early on. But at the same time, it's like, well, I want to change it now so hopefully it gets sucked up by these better keywords, you yeah. know? But sometimes even on a really good video, you think, this video is going to be awesome. And you watch and the views don't take off straight away. Yeah. Others, you're like, well, I'm really surprised that that one's got yeah. 2,000 views day one or whatever. So yeah. it's, yeah. You're never going to know. It's almost like you're never going to know. Yeah. We're running out of battery here, so let's wrap up with Herman's question again, or eyesight build. Let's just, because uh, I want to kind of hear your upload process. Once you've uploaded, because uh, uh, eyesight, I know you're good at uploading, and I know you're good at the keywords. What about, like, the, the post? Do you use, like, post on social, post in groups, do on Twitter? Do you guys have a process for that? Yeah, it's pretty basic, actually. Really? We just go through, um, and I picked this one up from Sean Cannell, actually, because it was pretty... Um, it was pretty basic. So he's uh, Think Media TV, too, yeah. awesome channel. Um, he, we basically just run through the. What was that? I'm awesome, I got awesome sauce is like I'm so late. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> I'm watching this video. 50, eight, Fifty-five minutes late, but that's fine. It, you'll be yeah, okay. It's They'll let you go. It's fine. Uh, sharing, yeah. So we basically just go. If you just log, just scroll down under a YouTube video, hit the share button, and then just go through every single yeah. one of those. Uh, so you have social follow accounts. the rainbow. Follow you, the rainbow. You have social yeah. media accounts over in these Russian yeah. uh, service areas. <laughs> we sometimes stop at the Russian ones. We haven't done it yet, but we should. Yeah, I've been looking at that, thinking, why not? Why not? Yeah, with so. with the content that we do, it seems like it would be allowed. Yeah. Right. You can't be like you know how to sneak fifty Bibles. In a prison, you know what I mean. I don't think Russia is going to allow that, that would one be through. A high ranking. Well, yeah. we did that last week. It's coming out. <laughs> I don't even know. It's just a on blur. a third channel. Yeah, yeah. 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 We were drinking when we yeah, made we were. it. So. Yeah, well, we're yeah. drinking vodka. So That's it's, right. Yeah. It's a sacramental wine. Yeah. You know. So yeah. I get that. That's really great for you guys to uh, to be here with us today and and spend time answering some of these questions for the audience. Uh, as we're as we're sort of departing, what would you say is the the biggest thing? The one thing you know, gun to your head that that you would recommend for for our audience. And our audience, they're growing channels, 1,000 subs, 500 subs. You know, what what do you think about for them? Keep Number at one it. Thing. Keep at it. So many people will stop just before their channel starts getting big growth. Or, you know, they'll look and go, we've been doing this for two years and we're only at 500 subscribers or, or less. Or, you know, it, it can be like our first 50 subscribers took so long yeah. and it, we were questioning it. Why are we doing this? We're putting so much time into creating these videos and some people, their channels just go, is that Eileen? Eileen. Um, some, some people's channels just take off really quick, but so many people just get demotivated. Yeah. You know, it's... Because it's know, not, it's, you think it's instant celebrity, guys. Yeah. It's not. Like, yeah. this has been in the works. I've been doing this for maybe four or five years since my first upload. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a lot, definitely... Think, th think of the long game and keep just reminding yourself that it's, you know, if you get one of the lucky ones to get that overnight success, then that's awesome. But for everyone else, we're playing a long game. So keep that in mind. That would be mine. I'm going to take two, actually. Oh, yeah. two. First one is planning. We're, right, so, we're out of time. Though. So getting. Yeah, getting, cut. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. it. Happens every time. Yeah. <laughs> um, getting, like, actually doing some keyword research and investing the time in learning how to make these things work. But the second one is because. It's easy to get discouraged when you see that you know that big mountain of work there, but yeah. it's not that bad. You just want to improve. The second one is to improve by one percent. Every single video you upload, you just want to make that tiny little incremental improvement, and then over a hundred videos, you've you know it's compounding. So it's one percent on one percent, and then it's it, the difference is is huge. So just focus on on those little incremental sort of improvements every single step of the way, yeah. and uh, and it and it works up exponential curves. So. I love it. Great advice, guys, from great creators. If you enjoyed the content that you saw here today, click that share button, guys. There's no joke, uh, no holds barred. We're trying to grow. We want this channel to grow, and you can help be a part of that growth by clicking that share button. Just tell your friends, hey, awesome, awesome video I saw today. Hope you guys will check it out. And I appreciate uh, all the help and the comments and the likes and the community that you guys bring to this ta to the table. No joke, uh, when I read through the comments with my wife, uh, it's, it's a blessing for us to see that you guys are watching, you're learning, you're growing, and we wanna keep that, um, 
uh, keep that uh, that going. So, guys, thank you so much for thank being so here much. today, and thank you for all the work that you Thanks, did buddy. at uh, Social Media Marketing World. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. New video coming out on the channel tomorrow on video email. It's going to knock your socks off. So remember, live on Mondays, new upload on Tuesdays. Wednesday, we're doing a live podcast on Facebook, so feel free to join us over there. Uh, as we start to log off, I wish you guys a great week, and we'll see you next time.